Hello everyone and welcome to my basement nerd cave today. Uh, this is the place where I do all of my 3D printing. I learn guitar, I mess with electronics, do some gaming, coding, you name it. It's one of my favorite rooms in the house. Today I want to work on my workbench. So I recently moved a couple of my printers off my workbench over to my new 3D printer rack. This is the Performax modular system from Menards. Uh, you buy each piece separately and build the rack you want, so it worked out perfectly for my needs. Now with this big open workbench, I want to add some organized tool storage to the back wall. Now you know I'm a big fan of French cleats, but for the Nerd Cave I really wanted to try one of the 3D printed options because I think they look cool and they may be better at storing smaller sized items. I'm not sure if they'll turn out to be more versatile than French cleats, but the only way to find out is to give it a shot. If you've been watching any 3D printing YouTube channels recently, I'm sure you've seen this. This is called the Honeycomb Storage Wall by Rasta P. And basically it's a bunch of 3D printed panels that you can mount on your wall and then attach different tools and accessories to. I ended up printing about seven of these panels, but just didn't get a chance to complete the project yet. In just the last couple weeks, a new player entered the game. This is Multiboard. It's from Jonathan over at the channel Keep Making, and he put in some five months of work into this to make it basically one panel to rule them all. It has snaps just like the honeycomb wall, pegboard hooks that don't fall out, and everything is threaded so you can easily bolt on items as well. Uh, it looks super thought out and just looks like a great addition to the Nerd Cave. So the multi-board panels are actually a little thinner than the honeycomb panels, um, but they actually feel stronger. You can bend this pretty easily, whereas the multi-board panel just feels stronger and it doesn't quite flex as much. So let's take a look at what we'll be using today. Uh, while I think the system is really cool, the documentation just isn't quite there yet. So it's kind of hard to figure out what pieces you need to use. So first we have the eight x eight core tile, and this is what makes up most of the board. And I'm gonna have two of these going across the whole uh, length of the board and uh, until you get to the edges. And we have edge pieces for that. Next we have my top row, which is a custom grid that I made using uh, the tile generator, uh, which is uh, supporter based, so you actually have to pay for access to the tile generator. But I needed one that was only seven octagons tall for my top row. And so this is going to go all the way across my top row till I get to the right edge. Now this final row is only four uh, columns wide because that's all I can fit. And that's gonna start at the bottom. I'll have two of those. And the very final tile is uh, one with no bumps, and so this is only seven tall by four wide, and that'll com complete the board. Finally, along the top, I needed these special cutout pieces, and I was able to make these also with that tile generator uh, and have a few notches that would allow my shelf brackets to fit within them so I can utilize as much space as possible. So there's a few different ways to mount this, and I'm going to use the recommended way, which is using these eight millimeter dual offset support snaps. And what these do is they go on the back of the board and they offset the board off the wall about eight millimeters. So you can actually run wires and cable behind them and it seems really useful that way. Uh, you can also use these small pegboard holes in, uh, with any uh, pegboard accessories or attachments. And there's two parts to this. There is the part A side and that goes on the back and then the part B side, which goes on top and locks it in. And there is a special orientation uh, that you need to use when aligning these to go on top. There's this line here on the part A, and that needs to line up with that same line that's on the part B. And when they connect, they kind of lock in. So you need to make sure that your lines are always in the right orientation. So here you can see I'm using one of the duals. This is going to go all along the bottom, the top or the sides. I have a single, which will be in any of the corners. And then when you're connecting four boards here, you need two of them. And the front of that is a quad snap. And I'll show you what that looks like. So that is this piece. So it joins four boards all into one. And you basically connect all these pieces and away you go. So if you haven't noticed, this is going to put a few holes in the wall. So I got a bunch of these uh, 35 pound drywall anchors. And I also got flathead screws because what comes with it is round head screws. And when this goes in, I wanna make sure that this is flush right here uh, so it doesn't protrude and uh, interfere with any threads or screws I have in there. 
Oh, so how I think I'm going to tackle this is I'm going to build them in three sections and I'll put up each section as I go. Um, as I add these part A uh, support snaps, I'm going to make sure that this line that is on them is always um, pointing to the bottom and pointing to the right depending on the orientation. That way they're all in the same direction. So I'm trying to decide if I need any more um, back wall supports to support um, these cutouts. I think it's going to be fine. I think I'm going to leave them for right now, but I can always add them later if I need them. So now that all the part A's are installed in this panel, I'm going to flip it over and uh, install the part B's. Uh, you will see that these aren't fully connected yet because it needs the quad support snaps on the front um, so that these are connected um, to both of these panels. It might have been a good idea to flip-flop these, so have two of these going this way, these two going this way, and so on. That way they're all connected as you do all this, but the quad support snaps will connect it all, so as long as I'm careful with it, I don't think it's a big deal. So one of the cool features about this panel being offset from the wall is I have this plate here, but I can just go in front of it and I won't be able to use any pegboard accessories there, but I should be able to use at least some of these grids for something. And uh, it just covers it up and you don't see it. So what I'm gonna do is mark the bottom left hole uh, exactly where I want this. I'm going to drill it, put the anchor in, screw it in. Then I can make sure that this is level, do the same thing with the right side make sure it's still level, and then I'll um, mark all the rest of the screws, take the board off the wall, put in all the anchors, and then finally attach it. So there is actually a stud right there, and so I'm going to use a two inch spac screw to screw into that stud. So now I'm gonna mark all my other holes. I'm using the top left hole here. Okay, I got all my holes marked. Let's take this off the wall and we'll drill some holes. So I had some trouble with those anchors. I kept screwing them in and they never locked in, but they did seem tight against the wall, so I just went with it. Okay, she's on there. Um, still not 100% sure about these anchors. They don't seem to want to lock down. It still feels secure. So we're gonna go with it. I did decide to alternate the two dual support snaps in the center of the grid. It made moving the piece without the front snaps installed easier so I could flip it over and then do the front snaps.
Now I won't lie, once I drilled the holes for this final section, I ended up putting it back on and attached the front snaps before I even put the anchors in the wall. So then I had to take off all the front snaps um, that connected them and two of them broke while trying to remove them, uh, which is why Jonathan says that these are semi-permanent. And there we go, we now have a multi-board. Now it's time to get some tools on the wall. So I ended up hacking some of these tool holders from Honeycomb storage wall accessories. Basically I brought them into Tinkercad, sliced off the honeycomb connector, brought in a multi-board file that someone designed and sliced off its multi-board connector and connected the two together and uh, printed the STL. I also found some holders like the bottle holders through the multi-board Discord channel which is great and there's some really helpful people on there already. I'll link to some of the files I use down in the description. I might upload some of the hacks I made, but they were pretty down and dirty just to get some tools up. You'll notice as I'm adding some of these holders that the multi-board panels do flex some when you're pushing the holder in since it's sitting off the wall. Uh, it was a little harder to deal with on the seams of the tiles, not near one of the supported areas, but it really wasn't too bad to work with. And we're done! I really liked how this turned out and I really enjoyed the process of working with Multiboard. This is just the start of the Multiboard project and I can't wait to see all the additions and remixes that both Jonathan and the community will come up with. I haven't even gotten a chance to use any of the threading capabilities with the bolts uh, on this panel yet, so I'm excited to work with that as well. I'll come back with another video to show you how this tool wall evolves and what I've added, so if you're interested to see more, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.